welcome to episode number two. Today we want to talk about a, another aspect of architecture that, that people get caught up on and often lose the entire pragmatic aspects of the problem, which is on the buzzwords around microservices, mini services, monoliths, and so on. So what we would like to do is kind of talk about what is the right structure uh, and what is the right way to organize things and why you need different kinds of these kind of labels and also a little bit about what it means for the organization when you organize in one or two of the other ways and finally about how to manage the manage these aspects in a pragmatic way instead of like just religiously saying hey i'm doing microservices i'm doing mini services and then running with the buzzword and then sometime later we're saying well we are now changing the buzzword given up on whatever uh, because our general position with any architectural aspect is it is never uh, right or wrong or black and white or whatever you want to put it. It is always a blend. You know, life is more complicated that, than right or wrong. Same thing with software. Exactly. So I think the, the catch here is not getting a very technically savvy architecture done. Uh, it's basically getting a pragmatic architecture that we can continuously deliver value to the business. Uh, I think that's where uh, some of the organizations are struggling at the moment as well. Uh, as Sanjeeva said, going through buzzwords and then try to build a perfect architecture in one go and then ended up not uh, delivering value to the business. So I think it's a timely uh, topic as well as there are a lot of uh, parallel conversations happening on where to use what and how uh, uh, the organizations can pick the correct uh, granularity of the services in the application architecture. So if, if you tie back to what we talked about last time about the, the, the power of abstraction as a key to addressing problems, in many ways, uh, the, this whole debate about microservices versus mini services versus monoliths uh, is also a kind of a abstraction debate about what level of abstraction, because it's really about modularity. Uh, it is really saying uh, it, as, as, a, as the needs become more complicated in any business, you can't just have everything in one big box and say everybody's got this under control, it's in one big box. You need to kind of partition it, modularize it, right? So it is the fundamental abstraction is one of modularity. Then you get into the debate of how much do you modularize? And you know, in, in our industry, we have this practice of looking for silver bullets because not a single, you know, computer science has been around for 60, 70, 80 years now, but still, we are still, you know, as a, as a discipline of engineering, there is nothing in terms of age. Uh, civil engineering has been around for thousands of years and still evolving and learning. So obviously, we are very much evolving and learning. And if you look from that point of view, the... The, uh, it is kind of natural that we are constantly you know, looking for, oh, we got the right solution, right? So yeah. when new buzzword comes along, everybody jumps out and say, oh, microservices, I'm cutting everything over to microservices. And, and what's right for one organization, one setting, one problem, one environment is not always right for one setting for somebody else. But because we have a little bit of this herd, herd mentality and, and it kind of connects to investment, it kind of connects to the way the entire organization has a, a entire uh, IT industry has very much a herd mentality set. The microservices are hot, so you get into the hype curve. Everybody's got to go up the hype curve. So funding comes recursively, makes microservices hotter because they have more, more marketing, more advertising. And everybody's always oh, cutting everything out of microservices because that's the right answer. And then finally, you start realizing well, okay, it's great for some stuff, but it's not the best for everything. And that, yeah. that balance is the, is the key. Right? And, and, and the fundamental underlying problem there is modularity. What is the right way to modularize your digital capabilities so that you can get things done as efficiently, as cost effectively, and as bug free as possible? Exactly. I think that uh, finding the balance is the key because uh, now we are speaking about this big ball of mud. So it can happen with the monolith as well as it can happen with uh, microservices as well. If you don't have proper way of uh, managing them, if you don't have a proper way of governing them, then you will end up with the big ball of mud with a uh, modular architecture. 
So that's why um, I think you uh, clearly uh, touched that thing on how we can find the balance and uh, some of the successful microservices um, implementation that we have seen, it's about defining the correct granularity based on the organization as well as what exactly that they need rather than just following what somebody is doing. It's good uh, to follow, but then again, we need to identify what's correct for the organization and bring it uh, in um, as well as modify it. Or if you are copying a specific pattern, modify it the way that uh, will be useful for the architecture and the uh, uh, organization uh, structure as well as team as well, right? Bringing an architecture and then trying to implement without the correct skill set, again, an issue uh, because business doesn't care. They are looking for keep on generating the uh, uh, value for the business. So yeah, the uh, definitely, right? exactly. And then uh, the IT or the technical teams will become a cost center again, not a value center. Right, right. It, it, yeah, so, so I think I think the the um, uh, you know the, this the, uh, this focus on um, modularity and kind of looking at how do you deliver value uh, is critical, and it's not about uh, you know it's not about one one religion versus the other. And I, I think one one more thing, Asanka, we need to touch upon a little bit is is the difference between the the hobbies or the one application one problem right solution yeah. versus a, a business that has many things that it has to do and the right solution for that right because we often get into this debate even internally in wc right we, we get yeah. into this debate saying well i can just use that thing and it's so much easier to do exactly that one thing yes. and that is 100 percent correct if the problem you're trying to solve is i'm trying to build one application for my my scenario and i don't need to worry about reusing capabilities, or offering that to other counterparties and various other things. There are hundreds of ways in which you can do that really, really simply. But when you get into a larger business situation, typically it goes beyond that. You have multiple teams, you have multiple consumers, multiple consuming kinds, employees, partners, and consumers, consuming customers, right? Consumer yeah. customers. And and you need to share because, you know, I have some data that I, I have some data that, that you need, but hey, I'm going to lock it up or I need so I'm trying to be able to share it. I have some capability that you need, so I need to be able to uh, let you access it. So, so I think it's really important that people think about this, not just in terms of, you know, microservices is the right answer to my problem, but, but when I'm in a business, uh, I don't, I, I'm not alone. Yeah. I have many peers typically in any any large scale any meaningful scale business there are many people writing stuff often you don't know they're writing stuff you don't know where they exist you don't know how to find it and often you don't want to find it because then it takes work away from you so there are lots of challenges uh, involved there yeah i think the reality right and the complexity that we see in the enterprise as well and that's an interesting uh, conversation that i had with one of the pioneers of microservices at the early stage uh, in a meetup uh, in san francisco city uh, so i asked about a debate happening about microservices and monoliths with uh, from him and the answer he gave whoever who uh, argue about these things uh, go back and ask how many production grade microservices you have written so then only you will see all these problems. And that's where I think this uh, concept of the inner architecture and out architecture is coming. Because uh, as you said, people are mainly focusing on this inner architecture, just write few microservices and then um, run it in a lab environment. But the reality is not that, that the complexity is coming from the outer architecture, how we are going to secure this stuff, how we are going to share these things, and then um, uh, about the analytics and all these uh, the quality of services associated with that, as well as uh, how other parts of the organization operating, as well as how we, we are going to share the data and capabilities across the organization, while we are bringing this type of a new architecture concept into the uh, business. Right. So let's, let's dive in a little bit deeper, right? So if you are, I think on Martin, Martin Fowler's website, there are two articles. One says start with the monolith. The other one says don't start with the monolith. That's mm -hmm. great. You should read both of them. Uh, kind of get a perspective of, you know, why the pros and cons of starting this way versus that way. So may, maybe, maybe we should try to, uh, you know, at the risk of, uh, uh, getting it wrong, try to define microservices versus 
sort of you know so, so maybe use a less uh, less charge set of terms so maybe you should talk about small medium large kind of services yes right. yeah uh, you know and and, and uh, the uh, because a typical formal definition of microservices is very much like a, a module or an object over the network it manages its own state it has a set of published interfaces it's self-standing, it can evolve on its own, it's version, the whole whole bunch of aspects like that, right? Um, but again, unless you are in, you know, studying this for theoretical purposes, for educational purposes, life is never that clean and simple. Uh, you know, you do share state across various things, you have all kinds of yeah. complexities uh, and so forth, right? So what's, what do you think is the right starting point in terms of... Yeah, I think uh, the, the starting point uh, basically coming from the business side, right? So that's where the uh, uh, identifying the, uh, uh, the business domains is the best way uh, by mapping how the internal communication happening inside the organization. I think that's where even the uh, Conway Law is coming and taking a picture here. So clearly identify how the business operates, uh, how the teams are organized, and what are the responsibilities of uh, each and every team? Because even the data uh, is owned by different teams, right? That's how uh, an enterprise is organized. So I think that is a really good uh, starting point. Uh, look at this uh, uh, domains, domains or the bounded context from the business point of view. Because the danger is if you are getting into a pure uh, technical and uh, low-level architecture um, level and then try to define these uh, boundaries, it's going to be an issue. So once we define that uh, high-level business domains, then we can get into the service level. So that's where we can identify what's the correct granularity of the service and uh, identify the small, medium, or large services. Um, again, now this uh, uh, classification or no grouping uh, from business domains coming into uh, into the picture from one side, as well as what exactly a specific uh, uh, functionality or the capability that provided from that particular unit is playing a picture there as well. Uh, so if I take an example, if you take the large services, everything is bundled together. So if you are working on a very low latency, high throughput type of uh, application, the uh, larger service might be a better option rather than you go into uh, small or medium services. Uh, so I think uh, that's, uh, uh, that might be one approach to uh, uh, getting and how we are going to start uh, this process. Yeah, and, and I think it's also important to understand that services and APIs and sort of network accessible, network accessible capabilities are never the end game. Yeah. Because, you know, businesses eventually are about people. Uh, well, you know, we, we are not at the, at the age of AI being uh, the consumer of services. So we are eventually, there is a human being who wants a book or wants, a, you know, a, a curtain delivered or wants something uh, that they need, right? They want to get yeah. something. So, so uh, the, on top of all this service war that we have in the technical universe, there is some kind of application. And today, there's two, fundamentally two kinds of applications. There's web applications and mobile applications. Um, and they both, of course, more and more web applications look like mobile applications in the sense that it's the entire application runs on the front end. And there's a little bit of stuff that you, know, you call into the back end to get stuff done. And many, many organizations need to offer the same capability over both the channels. And of course, now more channels are coming. We, we have... Uh, you know, from everything from a watch sort of device, uh, embedded device applications to now with all this Apple VR headset, yeah, uh, there's another universe coming, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But still, it comes back down to saying, hey, I need the network, I need network access to the capabilities of you as a business, right? Yeah. Uh, if you look at ChatGPT plugins, that's that's what it is, right? Yeah. Um, so so uh, uh, so in that in that architecture, the the key thing comes from that application side first, mm. right? Because you don't design services and say, hmm, let me see what, what problems I can, what value I can deliver to the business out of that, right? So yes. the problem starts with what is the value I'm trying to deliver to the business. 
And then you break the problem down. Say, okay, in order to deliver that value to the business, you need these, these capabilities. Right? Then you are debating, okay, what is the right structure of those capabilities? Are they independently scalable in terms of the load that they expect? So if scalable is the second part. I should ask, are they, is the workload they have to do independent from each other? If so, they need to be in modern deployment architecture, they need to be different units of deployment so you can scale them differently, right? Yeah. So like that, I think if, if you start from the, what is the problem you're trying to solve? The fundamental question you should always ask. Right? Yeah. You're trying to I deliver some value and then work backwards, right? Exactly. I think that's where this outside in approach is coming, right? Rather than you take a data set and then wrap it inside this set of services, and then expose the API, look at what's the experience, and then see whether the APIs are existing or not. And then look at, okay, if it, is, yeah. it doesn't exit, um, create a new API, and then uh, whether look at whether you need a, a new set of services to do that. Right. And then apply uh, the uh, granularity and then find, okay, how I'm going to organize these services yeah. and what's the purpose that it right. is delivering. Exactly. And, and even the CQRS separation that, again, there was an article, I think Martin Fowler wrote up about that command query uh, request separation, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and that was, again, about this question of load, effectively. Uh, if you remember, uh, Asanka, one of our first customers, I'm not going to name them, was a retail company. And they had uh, two, basically, you know, shop and buy were their kind of two fundamental abstractions. Yeah. And shop and buy have very different load characteristics because a lot of people are shopping, very few people buy. At the same time, buy is the one that you want to make sure has zero latency and works perfectly. Exactly. Hey, you're just shopping around, you know, we're doing comparison shopping. You know, we all do this all the time, right? Go yeah. to a hotel website, go to a hotel, you know, one of the booking engines, uh, go to an airline, go to one of the booking engines. Yeah. And you end up buying from one place, but you're shopping around for all kinds of things. So, uh, so that CQRS is kind of similar, a similar concept because it's a, you know, one is querying, the other is actually executing. Uh, GraphQL has similar things, the difference between a query and a mutation uh, yeah. and so on. So I, I think there's a, lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of need to really understand that partition because when you understand that partition, you start understanding, okay, this would be a better off thing if it's a separate entity, separate thing. And I don't mean entity in the computer science sense, but if it's a separate thing. And because its load is different, user patterns are different, and the SLA I need to give are different, then you start say, okay, that should be a separate component, right? And exactly. And then start, you know, so start again pragmatically with this is what I'm trying to deliver. To deliver that, I need this capability in a box, the other capability in another box because they have different weights and different priorities. Yeah. And the one thing we missed about the organization structure changes happened during. Um, last two decades as well, right? Uh, initially, it was a central IT team, and then it became uh, more decentralized by moving uh, the technical teams into line of businesses. So the decentralized nature of team structure came. Uh, so all these uh, uh, service architecture also improved with that uh, from one side, uh, as well as we didn't touch based on the um, a technology enhancement happened, especially from the containerization, and then uh, container orchestration systems uh, like Kubernetes came into the picture because uh, people try to build this type of a modular architecture for a long time, but I think underneath technology didn't properly support it. Uh, right. But I think we are in a great uh, situation at the moment. Uh, all the technology is backing to get a proper uh, modular architecture. I think that's the... Uh, 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 I think that we have to leverage uh, by identifying this uh, correct size rather than just debating about and then blindly adopting um, uh, a different type of styles. Yeah, absolutely right. I think the the, uh, the business evolution, sort of this decomposition of business, yeah. right? And that, that's been going on over the years. And and same thing applies in the real economy, not the, forget the digital infrastructure, right? Mm. Uh, it, more and more things that one person would do, you just break it down. You subcontract, subcontract, and so on, right? Yeah. So similar thing is happening in the digital universe. And I mean, it's not happening. It's been happening for, for a long time. Uh, it's very, very prevalent now. And, and that then, as you said, the technology to support that containers, Kubernetes, 
and, and various other, all these network accessibility, uh, different styles of network protocols, whether it's REST or GraphQL or gRPC, uh, WebSockets, WebSub, there are all these different things that have come around to support these different scenarios and, exactly. and to support the need for business to become composable. I think Gartner's term for this is composable business, right? Yeah. Uh, where you break it down, break it down, break it down. And then also that gives you the business freedom to decide, okay, this part I'm going to just get from somebody else. Yes. Right. And kind of, you know, whether you outsource or insource, a digital capability becomes a much more uh, flexible choice. Yeah, I think uh, that will allow to reuse a lot um, as well as uh, eliminate uh, shadow IT coming back to the picture as well, right? Um, so those are like uh, some good things that we see uh, by correctly applying this concept uh, into the business. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, I think today we talked a little bit about the, the bringing the modularity aspects of abstraction into architecture, right? And about the granularity of services coming out of that. I think we'll, in, in a later podcast, we'll dig into more about uh, more, more pragmatic guidance, more specific guidance on when you should start with a sort of a religious microservice where you have data and all of that package together versus the different layers and how to map it into uh, the deployment architecture that you need to have and the business domains that you need to have as well right? and how, how architecture maps to the business structure basically exactly and we can uh, bring some of the examples from a um, uh, few implementations that we have done as well as uh, specific uh, technologies that we can use to implement uh, some of these uh, concepts as well right well, thank you very much. It's been a fun conversation. Um, yep. And we look forward to the next episode. Yeah, indeed. Looking thank forward you for watching. To-